In this video, I'm going to share 11 different uses for a pillowcase while you're out in the woods. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, so I'm hoping this turns out to be a fun little video and maybe some practical information to go along with it as well. So where did I get the idea of using a pillowcase as a multifunctional bushcraft item? Well, it all began about three, maybe even four years ago. I watched a video from a YouTube channel. I don't think he's recording anymore. It was K-Dog Crazy. I'll have to check and see if he is. I'll be certainly linking his channel to this one at the end so that you can see the type of videos he had. And he made mention of a use for a pillowcase in one of his videos that really got me thinking. Now, I'll explain what he used it for in a moment, but I remember at the time thinking, would I actually carry a pillowcase for you just one use? Now, mind you, the use he put it to was quite clever, but I thought, you got to get more out of it than just that. So I took a piece of pen, paper and a pencil and I started writing down all the different things I thought you might be able to use a pillowcase for out in the woods. I came up with a list of close to 30 items and I don't think that's in any ways complete. In fact, I'm looking forward to offering you the opportunity to tell me more different ways that I'm going to share with you. But for this video, I decided just to bring it down to 11 different ways you can use a pillowcase out in the woods. All right, let's get started. All right, use number one to create a pillow. And I know that sounds like I'm stating the obvious, but that's where the origin for this video came from. K-Dog Crazy had come up with an idea for an age-old problem that we all have when we're trying to sleep on an inflatable air mattress. And what most people will find, especially where it's a nylon-topped air mattress and the inflatable pillow is also nylon, that they slip and slide. And how often do you wake up during the night and the thing is gone? It's just gone somewhere else in the tent. And you're looking for some way to secure it to your mattress to keep it from sliding around on you. Now, modern pillow makers and mattress makers are coming up with some really clever ideas like Velcro that will work to hold them together. Um, more often than not, than an elastic band. I've seen a few other ideas as well. But what K-Dog Crazy did was to take his pillowcase. Now, I don't have my pillow and my air mattress here to sh show you, but you can see how long this is, right? It's a standard pillowcase, much larger than it would be necessary for the small inflatable pillows that we carry when we go out in the woods. And he slid the pillow down inside of the pillowcase to the far end of it, which left a whole lot of material at the, this end of it, at the open end of it. And there were two ways of doing this. One is he then laid this on the floor of his tent put the air mattress on top, but left enough length that he could fold the pillow over the end of the air mattress and that would hold it in place. I thought that was pretty clever. Another way of doing it was to lay the whole contraption on top of the mattress itself. So it would be your shoulders or your back, presumably, that are laying on the end of the pillowcase that has nothing in it. And that holds the pillow and the rest of the pillowcase in place on top of the air mattress clever either way you're doing it. Now I came up with one more but it only work on a few air mattresses which is to actually slide the air mattress inside of the pillowcase as far as it'll go but still give me some flop over so the air pillow or the pillow itself would be on top. And I say only a few mattresses because well okay it's not very wide right so you don't have very many mattresses that are going to be wide uh, this narrow so that's that's why I, I hesitate to recommend that. Okay so that's use number one. What else can you do with a pillowcase? All right, so I made a list here. As I mentioned, I had about 30 items to start with, and I just brought it down to 11 of the better ones, we'll say. You, well, it's debatable. We'll talk whether they're better than some of the other ones I didn't include. But I'm just going to throw a number of them out. A few of them I'm actually going to demonstrate because it's one thing to say this is what I would use it for. It's another thing to show you how I would, in fact, use it like that. But some of the more obvious ones. How about a towel? So you get up in the morning, wash your face. You need to dry your face off makes a towel, especially if you've got a 100% cotton uh, pillowcase or at least a, something that's a high cotton percentage, less polyester. Think about that for a minute, 100% cotton. Does that spark any ideas of other ways you can use a pillowcase if you had to, hint, hint. What else could you use a pillowcase? How about for a forage bag? It's mushroom season. You gotta find, you come into a great patch of chanterelles. We're in chanterelle season. I just don't have any here right now. And this is a great way I could dig this out and use it to put my chanterelles in to take them home or any other mushrooms or any other wild edibles for that matter. So it, it's a nice pack of 
throwaway case for doing that. And I can just tie it to the outside of my backpack or just carry it by hand for that matter. How about wood or tinder collection? So I'm going around, I'm looking for some birch barks and some small twigs and I have to go quite a ways into the woods and just, rather than stuff it in my pockets or carry it all in my hands, I take the pillowcase and I use that as my collection bag for the tinder and uh, wood. Here's one that I don't think people pay enough attention to, and that is pre-filtering their water. So if you know what a mill bank is, mill bank bag is, then you'll understand what I'm saying when I say use the pillowcase for the same thing. So you found a water source, you're going to boil it, or maybe you're even going to use a filter device like a, uh, a Sawyer or something like that to filter your water for it. But it's kind of murky and there's floaty stuff in it. That's where the mill bank bag comes in. You would put the water in the bag, the water would drain through the cotton as a filter, it would keep all the debris behind in the bag, and you would have much cleaner, not, not safe to drink, but much cleaner water left. And then you run that through your filter or boil it. So it just takes a step out of the way and you don't have to worry about clogging up your Sawyer or, or any other filter system that you have. So a pillowcase, could it be used as a mill bank bag? Absolutely, right? Okay, what else do we have? So keeping with the theme of using it and water, how about it? Well, okay, today right now it's 30 degrees Celsius. Now I know for some of you that's just a nice spring day. For us, that's a good hot summer day, 30 degrees Celsius. And uh, it's hot here. Now if I had some cold beverages that I wanted to keep cold and I had a stream running nearby, I could put my beverages in the pillowcase tie a rope around it, tie it to something else on shore, lay the whole thing in the stream and have the stream cool my beverages off. So not a bad use for a pillow bag either. A couple of more obvious ones is for sitting on, right? So if you're out in the woods and you don't have a sit pad, I'm sitting on a piece of foam right now because I always have one with me for kneeling on and the like. But if I didn't have that or, and I, or I wanted something even more comfortable than that, then I could find some debris, some leaf litter, whatever it is, fill the pillow up bag up or the pillowcase up and that would provide me something to sit on. A little warmer, certainly a lot more comfortable, and yeah, you could do that. Now, there are other pillowcases that are called body pillows. I actually bought one. I was going to bring it out for this demonstration because I did some experimenting with it, and they're a long pillowcase, right? <laughs> I don't know, four or five feet long, and with that, you could use that for a number of other uses way beyond what we're discussing here, but if I wanted to stuff that with debris, then I'd have a full-on mattress for laying down on as well, so for a sit pad or mattress if you have the long one. How about a project mat? Something that you can lay on the ground when you're doing small projects like feather sticking because you know as good as you think you are you're going to lose some of your curls and if they get on the ground and they get wet they're pretty much useless. But if you lay out something to collect them on you can make nothing but curls and if they fall off that's no problem. You pick them up because you kept them dry because you, lay, you let them fall onto something so that you could collect them and keep them dry on. So that's another use for a pillowcase. All right, now in the next couple, we're going to get into a few demonstrations with them. And the first demonstration is something that I don't have often have a need for this, but when you do have a need for it, you're really you're struggling to find something that's usable and that is a heaving bag or a he way of heaving rope over a branch or across a stream or something like that so you've got to link the rope you've got to put it over a branch maybe you want to hang your bag up in the tree for the night and you've got to get it up there and it's really nice if you have a bag of some type to put your weight like a rock in that you can tie your rope to and then throw it up over the branch so I'll show that one in a minute all right my first demonstration is going to be using the pillowcase as a heaving bag. So you need a couple of things, obviously a pillowcase, you need a weight, I have a small rock inside of the bag, and you need your cordage or rope that you're going to be attaching to the bag itself when you go to toss it. So you do need to attach this to the bag and for the purpose of making this heaving bag and a number of the other demonstrations I'm going to show you, I'm going to keep the knots very simple. Just a couple of different knots, my preferred knots for this. There are other knots you could use. If they work, they work. You choose whatever you want. But these are some of the more well-known knots, ones that are fairly easy to learn, and if you're not sure you know them already, take some time to practice it. I'm not teaching you the knot today so much as demonstrating the knot, but there are lots of resources on where you can go to learn how to make the knot. So the one I'm going to use for the pillowcase and the heaving bag is the sheet bin. Start by making a loop out of some of the excess material. You can see the loop. Take the running out of my cordage, run it up through that loop, over the top, around, and where I created the loop over the top, run it back through. And now, just tighten it down. 
The sheet bend is great for attaching two different diameter cordages, or in this case, any type of material. It could be this bag, it could be a tarp, any number of things you can attach quite securely, yet still get it apart when you need to. Now, the branch on the tree behind me is only about eight, maybe 10 feet off of the ground. Not as high as you would normally look for if you're trying to hang a bag at night, but uh, I just wanted to make sure everything stayed in frame. So, I'll stand off to the side of the branch. Get this dead one out of the way here. Hold my cordage. And just a simple heave up and over. And there we go. All right, just that simple. All right, the next use for a pillowcase is it's actually, I'm going to break it down into three sub-uses, and that is, does it have application in first aid? And I could think of three things right off of the top of my head in first aid you could use it for. Number one, a sling, right? Now, if your first aid kit comes with a triangular bandage, uh, that's great. That's all you really need for this. But if it doesn't, and you need some way of suspending your arm either across your body or up, depending on what the injury is, then you can use a pillowcase. And I'll demonstrate that one in a moment, how that can be done. So that's one use for it in first aid. The next use for it is as a bandage. Now, I say a bandage, not a dressing, because, of course, this is not sterile. This might, may not even be clean, for that matter. But that's not important. If you have something clean and sterile that you can apply on top of an injury, whether it is a, a cut, a scrape, or even a burn, then you can you you need something to hold that dressing in place. And there's no reason why you couldn't use a pillowcase to hold the dressing in place. And the last one is, and hopefully this is not something you have to do for yourself, but if you do, then you really appreciate it. And that is if you break a limb, specifically a forearm or you know your wrist or something, and you've created a splint for that. Um, you know, wooden splints made from nature's resources out here can be really hard on, like if there's any pressure on the injury itself. Padding, right? So you can put this as loose padding inside of your splint so that you can keep whatever the injury is immobile so it doesn't uh, cause as much pain, doesn't get any worse, and, and you can still use the sticks to make the splint out of. All right, so that's 10 uses. Well, first aid is three uses all by itself, but 10 uses. And the last one is as a substitute backpack or means of carrying devices out in the woods. I'm going to demonstrate three different ways of using it as a way of carrying items. All right, my next demonstration is actually going to be able to show two things at the same time. First, I'm going to create a, an expedient sling for my arm that can be used to immobilize my upper arm in one or two different positions. But at the same time, this will also work to create a type of sling pack. So what I have done, I've already tied a clove hitch on this end of the bag. That would be normally the open end. It really doesn't matter where you start. I've used a clove hitch because once again, nice simple knot, easy to learn how to tie and easy to get apart later on. But what I've done then is I've actually taken, I'll, I'll, well I'll show you on both ends because we're going to do the same thing on both ends, is I've actually taken the bag and kind of rolled it from corner to corner in towards itself like this. Now I'm doing that to create a pocket inside of here. So now that I've got the end of the bag, I'm going to create my clove hitch. Now part of the trick is trying to judge just how big to make it. So you may not get this the first time. Oh, but to make a simple clove hitch, one way to do it is to do it with two loops. So I'm going to make a loop where the running end goes behind the standing end, the one that's not moving. And I make another loop just like the first one, but I'm going to fold it over on top of the first one. Now I'm just going to put my material through there and snug it down. Just pull it tight. Now, admittedly, if it's yourself that you're applying this to, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to create this with an injured arm. But uh, that's basically the concept behind it. Now, where is... All right. So there, this is going to go over my shoulder. I'm likely going to have to make some adjustments to this. Find where that pocket is I created. So that pocket exists at both ends here. My arm now is inside of that pocket, as you can see. And I've got an effective uh, sling to hold my arm. Now, here's the reality of it. 
this is going to hurt after a while. I mean, your arm, the whole idea is that you take the weight off of your arm and just let the sling do the work and let it hang like this. So if you are going to create a sling out of a pillowcase, something like this, you're going to need to put something behind your neck just because it's going to weigh on your neck over a period of time. But the same type of a sling could be used if you had to immobilize because you broke your collarbone and you had to have it up here. Again, you can do exactly the same type of sling. It's just a matter of adjusting the length of the ropes on it. Now, as I mentioned, at the same time of creating a sling, I've also created a sling bag. And what I mean by that is, let me just take the clove hitch off of the open end. I'm just going to reach out of sight for a minute and grab a couple of items that I can drop down the side to show you how this will work. All right, so what you have to um, imagine for a minute is the scenario you might be in to do this. So obviously I brought a backpack out and everything that I have with me in that backpack. So it's not like I need to make a sling bag today, but if I wanted to just take a, a short trip off to the side here somewhere, do a little scouting around, and I don't have a smaller bag to put a few possibles in, then maybe I can make one very quickly using the sling bag. Now I do have haversacks for that purpose, but maybe you didn't pack your haversack today because it wasn't on your agenda. It wasn't what you were going to be doing, but now you got the opportunity. Let's do it. But you need to take a few things with you. Maybe you need to take a couple of tools, like a saw and an axe. Or maybe you need to take your we well, you need to take your water bottle, especially at this type of temperature. So just to represent a load inside of the bag, my lunch bag and my camera bag. So that's what's going to go in here. So I'm going to start by throwing those two things down inside of the pillowcase. Better if they're not hard-sided items, right? Because there's no padding here when you're all said and done. Gather the bag up, like that. Now, this time I'm going to tie the same clove hitch, but I'm going to do it with a little bit more length on it. So, how can I do it? Make sure you can see me. Loop number one, loop number two, over top, feed the bag through, and tighten it down. All right, good old clove hitch, works well. And now, I have a sling bag. Or if I take my hat off, I can throw it right over my shoulder. And I've got a sling bag to carry my items around like that. I can access them or bring it around front could put it around your waist as well, I guess, if you wanted to do that. Now, as far as using this bag for carrying things in, I do want to show you one more way of doing it and creating a full knapsack out of this bag. But that'll take me a minute. I'll do it offline, but then I'll explain what I've done. All right, one more variation on using a pillowcase to carry items as an expedient backpack, and that is to create a full-on backpack, as you see I've done here two shoulder straps, and even a waist strap down here. Now, let me show you how I did it. All right, to create a backpack out of a pillowcase, I've used a couple of the things that I've already demonstrated in this video. First off are the knots. I used the same two knots that I previously demonstrated to create this. First off was the clove hitch. So the clove hitch is what is closing the bag off at the top. Now, I could have used a, a what is it, a lark's hitch or a lark's loop uh, on that. It would work well. I just find they tend to open up a little bit too prematurely a lot of the time. There is called a Miller's bag uh, hitch, which can be used as well. It's very, very close to a clove hitch. So rather than learning something new, if you know a clove hitch, you know a way of keeping the bag close. So that's what I used at the top. And at the bottom, the sheet bend on the two corners. So the sheet bend I showed you when I did the heaving bag, that's what I used on the corners of the bag. Now it takes a little bit of time, right, both corners actually, right? So there's two sheet bend knots tied there. So it takes a little bit of time to judge just how much rope you need for shoulder bags. And if you've got a long enough rope, and this one was just barely long enough, then I could bring it around and tie it in front with a square knot just to keep the bag centered on me and keep it from flopping around too much. Now, a couple of things, of course, is, you know, I'm not going to put a lot of weight in this because it's just ropes on your shoulders. You could put more weight in if you had a way of padding your shoulders, something underneath each side of the rope. You could do that, of course. And, well, you know, you don't want to put anything sharp edge because they're going to poke into your back as well. All right. That's another way yet of using a pillowcase for a backpack, use number 11. All right, so what I wanna do at this point is open it up to you. That's 11 different ways of using a pillowcase out here in the woods. 
What else can you do with it? I have a larger list, but what I want to do is let you suggest to me some additional ways we can use this pillowcase. And when I get a long enough list of unique ways, I'll bring out video number two. So put your suggestions in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.